Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis with a 40k stories video. Today I am doing the history of the Dark Eldar. The Dark Eldar have existed since around about M31 officially, although the Eldar race goes back a lot, 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 lot longer um, to the time of the Necrons, which I covered in my last 40k stories video. I'll put a link down below if you wish to check that out. So I'm going to cover the creation of the Dark Eldar and how they became different from the actual Eldar, and then explain how Dark Eldar society has become what it is. And partly it is the Eldar's fault, partly it is the Imperium's fault. So let's go back to um, the Necrons, the War in Heaven, shall we? And that is where the Eldar sort of came into ascendancy. They were, one and, they were fought on the Old One side against the Necrons of the Catan, survived the defeat of the Old Ones, and as the Necrons went into um, shutdown, or sleep mode as I like to call it, uh, the Eldar sort of assumed the position of galactic dominance. As every race has its turn to do, humanity you could say is in that position right now. But at this point it was the Eldar, and the Eldar had immense power. They could extinguish suns on a whim, they could do just about anything, the Eldar. And they had so much power and so few enemies, literally the Tyranids didn't exist, they were off in another galaxy, Chaos Marines and the Imperium didn't exist, the Necrons were sleeping, the Demons weren't really around, and all the other races pretty much come under the Imperials. So the Eldar had very few foes at this time, and so they kind of, they got bored and they had to find their own entertainment. And some took to studying the arts of the webway and psychics and the warrior path that we see with the aspect warriors now. Others took a more depraved route and these became known as the cults of excess. These were the Eldar who would do just about anything. They would go to the absolute extremes of emotion to find even the ounces of pain to extract joy from anybody. And... This all began to build up, this idea of excess began to build up, because the Eldar, as we all know, are a very psychically charged race. And all psychic races have a reflection in the warp. And in the warp, this new excess of the Eldar began to coalesce into a, its own form. It became a god of excess that bided its time, waiting for its moment. The Eldar had no idea that this was going on, but they began to worry about what was actually going on in the core worlds of the Eldar, which was somewhere around the Eye of Terror. The Eye of Terror at this point doesn't exist, I should point that out. And we are now at around about M30, M31, because the next set of action takes, year, takes place 4,000 years later, and that is stated as M35. And at this point, um, the Eldar Exodites leave, Exodite, Exodus, they leave the Eldar core worlds and they go off to create the Maiden worlds elsewhere and because they realise what's going on, they realise how dark and depraved the Eldar race is becoming. They up sticks and leave, fuse bonds with new worlds, create the Maiden worlds, yada yada yada. And eventually this keeps happening and the last few to leave were what would become the Craftworld Eldar. They also began to see what they had become and they upped sticks, made the crafts worlds, and buggered off. And the actual Eldar themselves, the ones who were left, were all now inhabiting the webway. Because you kind of have a problem with space in real space. And you can only control so much at a time. The webway is almost a sub-dimension with its own sort of idea of space. So it wasn't so much of a... Oh, oh excuse me. Very sorry. Um, and it had no real issues with space in the webway, so they're all carving out their own dimensions within dimensions and so on. And eventually it all came to a head. And with a scream of psychic energy, this god of excess that had been coalescing for millennia was born. And that was Slanesh. Now, Slanesh is obviously known as the Dark Prince because it is the youngest of the Chaos Gods. Corn Zench and Nurgle have around a lot longer. Slanesh was created by the Eldar. Um, a great rip in real space was formed, and this was the Eye of Terror. So you could say that Noise Marines, 
Uh, everything to do with Slanesh and the Eye of Terror is all the Eldar's bloody fault. Well, actually, it's part of the Eldar's fault, but it's mainly the Dark Eldar's fault. And the Dark Eldar sort of got away with it. The, in the real space worlds, um, the psychically charged Eldar were destroyed, they were ripped apart. Only those in the furthest flung maiden worlds and the furthest flung craft worlds were able to survive, which is why there are so few craft worlds out there. And But those in the webway, physically at least, were left untainted. They weren't damaged. However, they did have one problem. Slanesh was hungry. And as all Chaos Gods do, he feeds, or as far as we know, he feeds on souls. The Eldar most particularly because the logic is, you created me and now you're going to pay for it. And that price is their soul. And so the Dark Eldar realised, because they're now the Dark Eldar, that their souls were being drained away slowly by Slanesh, who the Eldar know as she who thirsts. Yes, they refer to Slanesh as a she, although he's known as the Dark Prince, so we call him a he. I know. Logic. So the Dark Eldar realised their souls are being drained, and they... Craftworld Eldar found one way around this. This was by the Spirit Stones, this was through the Infinity Circuits, which, if I had an idea how they worked, I would tell you, but I don't own the Eldar Codex to explain it. Very sorry. But the Dark Eldar had a much simpler solution. Instead of eating our souls, eat someone else's. We're going to put someone in our stead. And that was everybody bloody else. Every lesser being could suffer as long as the Dark Eldar did not. And so this is why the slave raids occur, and the Dark Eldar, by feeding on the pain and the anguish of their victims, is able to sustain himself or herself for a near indefinite period of time. For the Eldar are not immortal. However, they are extremely long-lived, and the Dark Eldar can live even longer if they sustain themselves by feeding on pain regularly, which is why there are so many real space raids, why we have the gladiatorial arenas of the white or witch cults, and so on. And this was how Dark Eldar society was governed. It was run by a series of noble houses who were Eldar of noble birth, who had sort of... Well, I can't really call them nobles anymore because they're Dark Eldar, and Dark Eldar have no sense of nobility. But they were run by high-birthed Eldar. And they had slaves in the factories who created the weapons because the Dark Eldar lost their psychic abilities as a result of... Everything that happened with Slanesh, the Eldar became more psychically charged but less physically powerful, whereas the Dark Eldar um, were better with fighting and such, but they lost their psychic abilities. And they had a lot of factories now creating the splinter weapons instead of having them psychically crafted because they no longer had the know-how. And one of these slaves was known as Asdrubael Vect. And he was a slave in one of the founders of Komara who sort of got his way out and worked his way up to become a Dracon of something he called the Cabal of the Black Hut. A Dracon is... Uh, I want to call him a sergeant or a senior sergeant. To put it in Imperial Guard terms, think a lieutenant. Think of a junior commander compared to a senior commander is what a Dracon is to an Archon. And Komara was run by the Archons. And Dracon of the Cabal was um, Vect. He was at the top of his ranks because the Cabals didn't exist. This was the first of the Cabals. And he wanted revenge on the noble houses through one thing or another. And the Dark Elder had one main real space raiding point. There was a portal um, in an eastern area of the Imperium that was used to raid nearby Imperial ships. And because they did it so little... It was just written off as bureaucratic error because the Imperium are all idiots. And this is now M35, so the heresy is gone, the Eye of Terror is here, and we basically have as near to the modern Imperium as we have. Vet's first idea was to increase these raids tenfold. And he decimated the regiments of guard that were stationed in this system, he decimated all the shipping lanes and everything else because came under attack, pulled them back to Comorat, and, ev- and all these sort of Oh, what's the word? The people who thought down on him thought him an idiot. Why are you getting the Imperium's attention? And eventually he did. The Salamanders had a battle barge. This was called Forge Hammer. And it was in the area searching for one of the relics of Vulcan. Because that's what the Salamanders do. And Vect captured this ship. Um, he locked out all the communications. He jammed it with haywire weapons. And shut the barge down and towed it into Comera. And this caused masses of uproar for a Space Marine captain who was on board 
was a very, very good catch. He would survive a long time under torture or in the arenas because he was a very capable fighter. And so he was very lauded for this, actually. And as he arrived, the noble houses, I believe that his name was Varillion. I'm just going to pause the video and just double check on names. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my reading done and the ship commanded by Captain Focus, P-H-O-E-C-U-S, was confiscated by Archon Zelian, starting with an X, not a Z, and placed in High Comera as his personal sort of trophy. However, the mainstream communications were jammed. However, the psychic communication was not. The epistolary on board with the captain on this battle barge, no, strike cruiser, not a battle barge, um, sent out a psychic signal, a sort of a beacon, right in the middle of High Comera, which is basically the nest of power for the Dark Elder. And it was just a beacon calling out to the Imperium, come and get us. And Zelian wanted to cleanse the ship of the Space Marines, because that's what you do. Take them prisoners, and so on. The problem was, he ran into some very heavy resistance. The bolters of the Space Marines were mowing the Dark Eldar down. Yes, the Marines were dying, but they weren't dying as fast as the Eldar were. So, as a show of appreciation, quote-unquote, Zelian gave control back to Vec and said, all right, you do it. You do the slave raids. You get the prisoners. It's your, your catch. You do it. Which, it sounds like a good thing, because that way Vec gets all the plaudits. And Vec decided, right, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to take all of my warriors who are loyal-ish to Zelian or have ties to Zelian, and I'm going to send them in piecemeal, meaning the marines will cut them down no problem. He then began to hire mercenaries who had ties to Zelian's court and sent them in piecemeal, meaning that most of the strength of Zelian's court, at least in the Cabal of the Black Heart, was being weakened and killed, which was a very, very good thing for Vect. And eventually, um, I think, Z yeah, what happened next was that the psychic beacon was received and somebody, some idiot, left the door wide open, this portal um, was left open, it was jammed open, the guards were killed, and the marines came in. And the Silver Skulls were present, the Howling Griffins were present, and the Salamanders sent the battle barge Vulcan's Wrath, which was basically flattening entire buildings on impact. It was that big in comparison. And of course the Dark Eldar scrambled their aerial reinforcements, such as Void Ravens, Razor Wings, which were absolutely tiny by comparison, but they were doing damage. Despite how much they were being torn apart, they were still doing damage. Vulcan's Wrath particularly took a hammering. However, they were still able to discharge their drop pods. And eventually, 500 Space Marines managed to make, I want to say Planetfall. It wasn't quite Planetfall, but they managed to land in Komara and their drop pods, establish a perimeter, and they were doing very, very bloody well. And this was really problematic. So... Obviously, they need to kill them. And the first moves were to use the Heli Hellion Gangs, the Reavers, Mandrakes. And most of them were just getting burned. Flamers were present and they were just massacring them. And it was not going well. The Space Marines who were being hit by the splinter weapons were either shrugging it off because of the power armor or just gritting their teeth through the paint. Which I had to give them a lot of credit for. That can't be easy. And eventually, um, after a long, long fight... The white or the witch cults enter the fray, the cult of strife in particular. Now, the cult of strife at the time, and it still is six millennia later, is led by Lilith Hesperax. And she and her warriors went in to do the business. And to be fair, they were doing a bloody good job. And Archon Eurillion, starting with a Y, uh, entered the fray thinking, right, I can get my chance for glory here. Until one of the witches chopped his head off. At which point, the witches departed, their job was done, they had done what Vect had asked them to do. Weaken the marines and take out Eurillion or one of the Archons who tried to take his place. Um, one of the other Archons, who could use doppelganger technology, managed to duplicate himself and then suddenly got sniped by a dark lance. So many of the high Archons of Komara were being taken out, mostly by other Dark Eldar, which was worrying, for the Archons at least, and right now this is in the middle of Zelian's territory. And now, at this point, um, they go to disassemble Forgehammer. Because if Zelian can't have his prize, the Astartes certainly aren't having it back. 
so they begin to disassemble it, at which point the first company, Salamanders, teleport down, launch a counterattack, and repel the boarders, who are trying to disassemble the ship molecule by molecule. And it's all going blooming wrong, I have to say. Um, at this point, um, Zillian's sort of lost, and Captain Fo Focus, as I'm going to call him, and he's probably not how you pronounce it, I'm going to call him Captain Focus, and his squad pull out their crack missiles, launch them at the towers, which are holding the faux hammer, forge hammer in place. And somehow, they manage to set off nine chain explosions, which destroy all of the locking towers, as if they were planned to do that. And the forge hammer was freed. Many of the marines that were then on Comara were then teleported away. Those who were left were either killed or captured as slaves. However... Now, the crippled Forge Hammer regrouped with Vulcan's Wrath and the other ships. And as they blast it off, or blast it away, because they don't have the same teleport technology when they're in the webway, um, the afterburners on Vulcan's Wrath pretty much scorched the entirety of Zelian's territory. All the Dark Eldar pretty much within, Zelian included, were killed in the blast. And this left a massive power vacuum in Comera. As you might expect, all the main leading Archons are dead. And who else to fill this vacuum but Asdrabael Vect and the Cabal of the Black Heart? And that is the story of how Vect came to power. He then consolidated this power by systematically eliminating anyone who stood against him and making sure anyone who was on his side kept his favour. Otherwise, they were toast as well. And the Cabal of the Black Heart still is the most powerful group within Comora society. Uh, Comorite society, although the witch cult of strife, still led by the Lith, has close ties, and they do say Lady Malice is up to some up to no good. But that is um, another story, and I may do that one day. But that was the main story of the Dark Elder: their birth, um, their screw ups, and the rise of Vect. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and leave any comments down below, or head over to Twitter at Tactical Imperial. I'm happy to talk to you over there about just about anything to do with the hobby. I really don't mind. So head over there and talk, because that's, well, what it's there for. Uh, you'll also get some hobby thoughts from me over there, as well as some updates, hopefully. So, yeah, thank you for watching. My name is Michael, and I will see you all again, folks.